Should the executive mayor of the city of Johannesburg, Herbin Mashaba, shoulder some of the blame for the recent outbreak of xenophobic attacks? And what does he think the future relations between locals and foreigners looks like? And after two weeks of hell, really, for anyone who lives in town, works in town, should the mayor also apologize for anything? Here's my interview with Herman Mashaba. You are being accused of scapegoating foreign nationals and therefore giving other people who feel desperate around the city a easy target. I think it, it, it is really quite unfortunate. I think uh, we, uh, anyone would uh, actually come out with such uh, accusation would uh, be just uh, be politicking and cheap mm. politic and dangerous politicking. Mm. I think South Africa cannot really be used as a test case um, uh, to, uh, to accommodate uh, people without documentation. Because if we are saying people of the world can come to South Africa without documentation, then what's the point of us actually even what, uh, having home affairs? What's the point of us as South Africans having to have identity documentation? But then what would really be the consequences? It will be a, a country to, that will be lawless. And I don't really believe that uh, I want to live in, in a society like that. But in a country where we've had not one, not two, but three separate incidents of xenophobic violence and flare-ups, shouldn't we be more responsible about what we are looking for? Shouldn't we be urging the police, the Home Affairs Department and all other associated departments to be part of the solution without necessarily um, raising um, our voice, making it seem as though foreign nationals, especially of African descent, are not welcomed. Firstly, I think, uh, uh, let, let me put something really very clear. I think I find this totally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Every time people talk about foreign nationals, why do they only refer to Africans? We've got people from India, we've got people from Pakistan, we've got people from all, Mayor, all over the world. So, the so what I want no, no, but the thing is, what I'm trying to say is that when we talk about undocumented uh, the, the, the foreign nationals, I think honestly, I take serious exception to mm -hmm. this when people only refer this as if uh, we only have problems with uh, with Africans. We've got the problems with Pakistanis, Indians. Uh, Czechoslovakian, so we've got... Uh, and people you know, see you on the clean-up campaigns that you're going on, raiding of malls, looking at people selling counterfeit goods and stuff like that. But people on social media say, we still don't see a significant amount of any other minority in this country to say that it's not but, just but, Africans. But, 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 please, uh, go into the counterfeit uh, goods market. Uh, go and see who's... Uh, who's uh, Are Chinese who's people being arrested out there? Uh, uh, it's, uh, Chinese, uh, Pakistanis, and people... Uh, people from all over the world. So I think it's, it's a question of, that's why I'm saying is that I take this personally, I, I'm serious exception to this, when people only refer to Africans as if they are the only ones who are posing a threat to South African sovereignty. We, Anyone who's undocumented, anyone who comes into this country uh, 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 without documentation and commit crime, unfortunately those people must be dealt with. And the thing is, at the end of the day, for me, as you are aware, I've been dealing with this matter with Home Affairs. I've been asking, I, I'm sure you, you are aware, mm -hmm. two months ago, I even had to actually write to mm -hmm. Home Affairs um, uh, portfolio mm -hmm. to request or demand uh, Home Affairs to really do something about this. Because unfortunately, what happens when uh, you, you, you have lawlessness in, in, a, in a country, who suffers? The poor people, including our foreign nationals, mm -hmm. who would obviously live on the fringes of society. If you, I can take you into buildings in, here in the city of Johannesburg, where prostitution happens, where the child labor happens, where actual uh, slavery, mm -hmm. human, modern day slavery happens. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand how anyone would really want to really defend such criminality. Where today, in this modern day, where slavery happens in the city of Johannesburg Mr. Mayor, and I think other places. What we are trying to do, and I'm only saying this because I read your last penned uh, opinion piece about the city, and in it you say that you you speak unfettered, you know, uh, uh, truths and uncomfortable truths about where we are as a as a country. What I don't hear you saying is how you see the relations of foreigners, minorities, people who come to the city of Johannesburg, and what a model of that looks like. I haven't heard you say, this is how the best relations are. 
Well, uh, unfortunately, you, uh, you, if you have been following on my case, in fact, you remember, uh, I don't know if you remember on the 1st of December 2016 when I first raised this matter during my 100 mm -hmm. days and I was reported to the South African Human Rights Commission and they did a thorough, fortunate enough, thorough, independent work and mm -hmm. no one has actually found anything that I've said that is outside our constitutional framework. I think what is happening here in our country, we are failed by home affairs, we are failed by the, our criminal justice system that is creating chaos uh, 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 in, in, in South Africa. But and, I, and I strongly believe that... Um, can we South show Africa what success looks like? Can we show what an integrated Johannesburg that knows how to live side by side with well, minorities uh, well, and foreigners? Well, uh, this country over the last 136 years or 140 years uh, built at uh, the back of uh, migrants. Uh, for us, as black people, uh, were not obviously at the time, most of the time not treated as citizens, but this country was built at the back of uh, migrants. And I've been very clear around this particular matter uh, to say we want uh, the migrants to continue coming into this country to come and add value. But we cannot obviously afford a situation where we have criminality as part of this. Ultimately, exercise. Mr. Mayor, that's what we had on your city in Chepis Town. That's what we had. We had criminality for over an extended period of days. Where do you think the failings are? Well, uh, it's upset to you. And the apportion, failings and the fa some blame to yourself as well. No, absolutely not. Unless, if you want to really blame it, then you must blame our constitutional framework. Because our constitution is very clear around uh, the people being documented as soon as they arrive in South Africa, if they ever arrive here without uh, having any documentation. Firstly, the constitution is clear around people coming into the country legally. The constitution is very clear around people res when they're here respecting our, uh, the, our laws. And for some reason, if people are running away from uh, uh, persecution from their countries, they must be immediately be documented. If obviously we are saying, if anybody feels there's something wrong with, uh, with what I'm articulating, then, then they must change the constitution and obviously really then bring in a new uh, interpretation. And uh, we will abide by, uh, by what our constitution says. But right now, if you want to really blame me, then I think uh, well, then we must put the blame on the authors of our constitution. Mr. Mayor, you say in this latest opinion piece that you penned that you are not xenophobic. It Absolutely. left me wondering, how do you know that? Well, Can uh, you prove well, that? well, uh, if, if uh, 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 for me calling on people of the world to come to South Africa, or uh, we welcome mm -hmm. people of the of the of the can of the world to come to South Africa, well, how can I uh, be xenophobic? I've, what I want is the rule of law. So there's a difference between, uh, the, in fact, for, for me, people who are advocating for lawlessness are people who are xenophobic because what they do, they encourage chaos in a country. What do you say about the loss of life in your city? and the rampant destruction and Well, it, it is for that reason, uh, two, uh, two, three weeks ago when we had uh, the, the, the recent outbreaks, I actually did, did, did wrote it to, to the Premier of the province requesting him to engage national government to bring in the army because I felt there's a need for us to really protect our residents, including our foreign nationals. When you leave the Johannesburg shores, as it were, do you get accused of being xenophobic elsewhere on the continent? Oh, it's never been. Uh, I, uh, there's not, if I, uh, over the last three years that I've been in government, I've hosted uh, African uh, the diplomats uh, every single year. I bring them in. First, uh, first I address all of them in 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 uh, in, uh, in Tuani. And every year for the last uh, two years, I bring them here. We spend a couple of hours with them. I take them through the city's plan, including obviously the challenges that uh, that we are, that we are facing. So uh, I, I engage. Uh, our our diplomats, uh, the African, the, the Europeans, Americans, and so forth. So I engage uh, people of the world because we want investments. We want uh, uh, the human capital uh, the, uh, in this country to assist us in, in growing our economy in our country. The president has started offering his apologies. He started this weekend at the memorial uh, service of uh, former Zimbabwean president Robert Mugabe. And today he extended another apology to Nigeria. Do you feel you have something to apologize for? No, there's nothing for me to apologize uh, about. I think uh, I, 
we have the responsibility to get uh, the president and to help to get him uh, to get the Home Affairs uh, to do something about the documentation. But this is your city, Mr. Mayor. Y yes. Uh, Where the, these things happen. Yes. Uh, Any the, but but, 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 but what, 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 what do you tell me, what do you, would you expect me to really apologize for? Uh, it, it is unfortunate uh, what has happened, but it has happened. Uh, for me, in fact, I don't regard this as an accident. It was something bound to really happen. When, when you you, you let a country operate uh, without laws. This is ultimately what you get. And I think I, would, uh, I don't really see the reason why one uh, have to apologize. More especially after the many years of engagement where some of the people uh, in, in, in government and some of the organization accusing me of calling for the rule of law in the country. So must I apologize for having the constitutional framework that we've got? Then I, th I think if anyone has got to apologize, then let the authors of our constitution apologize. Thank you very much for being with us on this edition of Political Capital. We're back on your screen next Tuesday at 6.30 Central African time, only on CNBC Africa. Until then, keep well.